well. So we have Kelly here today. He is an actor here in New York City. What do you want to look at today? Um, having a little bit of trouble with uh, limited mobility in my left shoulder. Okay. Um, some general fatigue in my neck from okay. that from dancing dance classes. Um, so left shoulder, neck, and then just a general check in with my alignment because this is my first adjustment. Adjustment. All right. Cool. Cool. Great. So I'm gonna have you lie face down. I'm gonna put a piece of paper down for you to uh, have under your face. Okay. And. Your ankles will hang off, which is good. You're pretty tall, so I'm going to have you come up even a little higher. Perfect. And I'm going to just move your pant leg up a little bit sure. so I can get to your feet. Uh -huh. And moving you into the middle of the table. Maybe even come down one more inch towards me. So you're going to have to remember to uncuff these before you walk around New York, okay? <laughs> I'll make them look good. All right. Let's see. So these are alignment shoes. When you... Um, Watch either some of my other videos or if you play back your own video it, when it's posted, you'll see why I do it. But um, so you can see your right leg is about a centimeter short in this position. And that usually means something's off with the pelvis, perhaps sometimes the knees. So I'm going to have to look a little closer. I'm going to bring the legs up to position two, which is 90 degrees. Now, sometimes they get shorter in that position, but in this case, your legs evened out. So the centimeter deficit on the right now evened out when I brought it up to 90 degrees. But there it is, it's still short in position one. So I'm gonna stress on the inside of the knee or do a, like a little tissue pull and that doesn't change anything. I do the outside of the knee, I get no change. The legs still stay uneven and I pull on the knee and that lets me know that it's not the knees. So I have to keep going. And you didn't have any knee symptoms anyway so I wasn't really suspicious of that but I didn't wanna jump the protocol. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push in on the bottom of your pelvis, like that sits bone that yoga teachers talk about. And that did work. So I got a balancing from just that direction. So I'm gonna do a, a corrective adjustment with these tapping instruments. So it's gonna be very gentle. Have you ever watched any of the videos I post? Yes, so I have. you see there's some tapping stuff I do, some mm -hmm. stuff by hand. So I'm gonna go into the sits bone and kind of go up and away. Let me. And then right near the sits bone is the sacral tuberous ligament. And it's called that because it attaches from the sacrum to the ischial tuberosity. It's a short ligament. And if I get under it and push up and out at a 45 degree angle, I can really pivot the sacrum and also move the pelvis a little bit. Now let's go back and look and look the, the feet are level. And I bring the position two, they're still level. I go past, break the 90 degree plane, come back. Sometimes that stresses out the sacrum, but you're fine. They're level. I'm really happy. Put your right wrist on your lower back. And that's a stress for her L5. Switch arms. Stressor for L4. Both arms on the lower back. And we're jumping ahead to L2. The legs are staying even the whole time. Arms back alongside your body into neutral. I'm lifting the table just a little bit. That's the noise. And I'm doing that just for me, not for you, because I just want to not hurt my own back. Put your right palm to the top of the table by your face. Perfect. And that checks T12. And I'm getting no change in the legs, so I'm not seeing anything stressed yet. I'm in the bottom of the thoracics. Bring that arm back down for T10. T10 looks good. Bring the left arm to the top of the table for T11. Ooh, I'm getting a little flutter now. So now I'm getting a little bit of a shortening. Bring that arm back down. Let's see what it does when you bring it down. Yeah, so now I'm really getting a shortening. Bring it up and it's lengthening. Oh, I meant the legs. Um, so I'm getting some stuff right about here. Do you feel the tight muscles here? Yep. Good, that's the, that's the worst spot, right? Mm -hmm. Of the spots that I tested. Yep. So I'm gonna adjust right into here. I made you jump a little bit. Yep. And then I'm gonna come to the opposite side and just get the corresponding ribs. So I adjusted T11 and T9. Bring the left arm to the top of the table again to recheck what we just did. Bring the arms back down. The legs are staying balanced. I'm happy. Bring both arms up together. That's right. And that's still staying balanced. So that was for T8. Bring both arms back down. And I don't do every single segment because there's certain checkpoints that are much more significant than others. If I felt like I missed one, I can always go back and check, let's say, the one that I didn't do. But turn your face to the right. 
there's probably close to 600 of these tests. So you don't do the ones that aren't indicated. You do the ones that reveal themselves as a pattern to chase. Lift your right shoulder off the table and put it back down. And that's for T4. Squeeze the right elbow against the side of the body. You just kind of squish that arm in. Perfect. And that actually showed something. Relax the arm. Your leg went short again on the right. And that means that you have a medially rotated scapula on the right. Head back to center. If it's a four point move, we get the whole kinetic chain of the shoulder. So here's your scapula right here. Mm -hmm. And we're going to adjust from medial to lateral. We're going to come up onto the humerus. So you'll feel this tender point right here. Mm -hmm. I know you, you have that left shoulder. It's the left shoulder that hurts, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to do that next, OK? And I'm going to go medial, uh, inferior to superior on the humerus. I'm going to uh, bring your arm up like this. And here, look over here so you can see what I'm going to do. I'm going to go right here on the head of the radius, and it's going to be tender right there. Do you feel mm -hmm. that spot? Yeah. Look how it makes the, the look how it makes the finger jump. Watch. <laughs> so get up a little higher and look down. So this is like marionette strings. I mean, get the camera up a little higher and look down. So watch the middle finger while I do this. Can you do a two shot? So you're going to get my thumb and his middle finger. Look, I can make the finger jump. Is that weird? Because it's like marionette strings. And then I'm going to bring the arm back. And I'm going to also adjust into the lunate bone. Good. Now squeeze that elbow against the side of the body again. Let it roll out. And they're even. That's fine. Squeeze the left elbow against the side of the body. Let that roll out. And that one really short. So that left shoulder, and let it relax. The left shoulder is a little traumatized. And actually, that one went opposite. That is a laterally rotated scapula. So the scapula, when it goes lateral um, in its misalignment, it also pulls up the humerus. So it kind of does this. It goes boom. And so to fix it, we have to go lateral to medial to push it back. And then we also have to bring the humerus down. We have to adjust the ulna, and we have to adjust two carpal bones. So let's do that first. So we're going to adjust from lateral to medial. We're going to get on the humerus and adjust from superior to inferior. We're going to adjust the ulna. Do you feel that tender point right there? And then we're going to also adjust the posterior carpals in two spots. So I hold the lunate bone because I don't want to adjust that. And I adjust the wrist there. Let's do a little bit more with that left shoulder. But let's first check our work. So we just did the a kinetic chain of the left shoulder for laterally rotated scapula. Pull this elbow in, let it roll out. Let's check it. And it's nice, it's relaxed. But there's other things we can do. If you put the palm face down on the table or palm down on the table, what it does is it uh, externally rotates your arm. So we're just gonna do the left side. Do you feel it? Watch this. So here's your arm and then I'm gonna turn it like this, right? Mm -hmm. And to create that, you hold your hand there like that. And I go look, and guess what? It pulled your leg almost two centimeters short. So we got into something here. This is where, because your left arm's been, or left shoulder's been really cranky the last week or so, right? Mm -hmm. You feel this ropey spot here? Mm -hmm. That should kill, in a way, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm doing it twice, because I didn't feel like I got what I was looking mm -hmm. for, which is I wanted to be able to rotate it. So now do this. Look back at the feet and the feet are even. So I took that pressure off. There's more. So now turn a palm up again and you're going to lift this arm up, which anterior, it pushes the humerus anterior. So do this by yourself. So you can lift the palm up and you're pushing the head of the humerus forward. And I go look at the legs and that made it go at least 1.5 to 2 centimeters short. So now I'm going to take the uh, instrument and adjust. Basically, here, look at this. Basically, I'm pushing the humerus back because his humerus went anterior. And without having him flip over, I can just lift his arm up and get under there. But I'm looking for that spot right there. Let me do it to myself. Ow. No, it didn't hurt. So lift that palm again and put it back down. Good. So this time, I'm going to have you uh, swing your arm off the table. And when we do that, we're kind of pushing the uh, humerus posterior. And I don't think he has anterior and posterior humerus at the same time. He does not. Now you're going to hold your arm out to the side like this, which stresses the T2 rib. And let's see if that showed up. It does not. Put this palm on the back of your neck, which checks for superior scapula. 
and that actually showed up. So your scapula on that side is superior and you'll feel this tender point right here. Mm -hmm. You feel that? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna push that straight down and that's part of your shoulder movement too. Good, now put your palm back on the back of the neck again. Let's see if it balanced out the legs and your legs are balanced. Lift that left elbow off the table, which checks for facet jamming in the upper thoracics. That's fine, relax. Push the elbow down into the table, which checks for a sternoclavicular joint and no change there. Good, so the next thing we're gonna do is um, lie on your back, please. How are you doing so far? Great. It's interesting though, right? It is, no, I can we're, feel it. We're doing different stuff. We're, you know, I took my time, I went through all the different angles of the shoulder. Sure. Uh, here, look up at me for a second. So we're checking rotation, we're checking rotation, we're moving the arm this way, this way, this way, this way. Mm -hmm. When you push the elbow into the table, it stresses the SC joint, the sternoclavicular joint. Here, feel that for a second. Let's do it on your good arm. And um, as you push in, it, it, compresses this joint here. So if there, if that joint is already compromised, uh, here, push against my arm. Do you feel how, it, and take this finger yeah. and touch this spot right here, which is the space between this joint right here. Okay. Okay. So now push against my, and do you feel how that yeah. flexes there? Yeah. So it's a way to check that joint to see if it's been compromised. Okay. Yours wasn't. Okay. Um, so now I'm gonna have you move closer to the table on me, uh, next to me. I'm gonna lower the table so it's a better height for me. I'm going to reach under and just adjust into your mid scapula area. And you felt a few of those. Yeah. They didn't make a big noise for everybody, but you felt it. Come to the middle. But you could feel a few of those pops yeah. on the inside, right? Scoot back towards me. I'm going to do a little neck release. Right in there, right in there. Wow. Here's a big one here. Line your side facing me this way, please. And pull up the top knee. And let me roll these shoulders back. So, so I'm gonna do this spot right here. Okay. That's it. So come stand. And see what the shoulder feels like. I don't know if it's gonna to totally feel different in one day. No, you can totally tell the mobility just to- Really? Here, turn here this before. way so I can see what you're doing. It was here before, before yeah. the beginning, but now a full extra like three, okay. three or four inches of flexion. One of the biggest, I found two big misalignments here. Drop your arm and turn towards me a little bit. So one is I felt like this, this whole uh, humerus was pitched forward. So when that happens, you can't get rotation. The other, so I took some of the humerus, anterior humerus out. And then I also found that there was um, externally rotated. So this position was also compromised. So think about it. When you turn your arm back, you need to um, rotate. And you also have to have that humerus in a good position or you can't get the arm back. So even with those two corrections, I think it made a big difference. Truly, truly, truly. Yeah. That's so good. All right, man. Dude, I appreciate Thank you. That. I appreciate it.